Hey everyone, uh, in today's episode of Pinchas Garage, we're going to learn how to lead your Mark 7 TDI or gas GTI, whatever car you have, uh, slave cylinder. So let's get to work. Alright guys, so for your bleeding process on your Mark 7 uh, TDI, uh, this process works for pretty much any Mark 7, Mark 6, even Mark 5 and 4. Um, just pay close attention to what you need to do. All right. So first off, um, on the Mark 7 and 6s, I believe they have this little valve. Uh, I could be wrong. It might be different on some of the older, uh, older cars, but currently this is where we're at. So um, it is very hot. So I am glistening currently. <laughs> so first things first. Number one, you need a nice clear bottle um, so you can see what's going on in this process. Number two, a nice little rubber hose. Uh, if you can get a clear one, by all means, get one. If not, um, this is a cheap little vacuum line. You can get it out of them for like a dollar or two. Get that. About a foot to two feet is best. Two feet will be best. All right. You're going to run the little hose to the nipple on your uh, here bleeder valve right here on the clutch slave cylinder or the, I guess, throw out bearing on this in this scenario. Um, now on Mark 7s, you have this little twisty thing here. Um, on Mark 5s, maybe in 4s, you have to use a little uh, wrench to do this. This process is very similar to all the cars that I've ever worked on. So I don't change the process. I mean, to me, it works. Now, if you guys have a better option, please put that in the description below to help others in future process uh, for DIYs. So what you're going to do is that you're going to crack the valve open and then if you want to fill the water bottle up with about a quarter inch of fluid here and the reason for this if you're doing this by yourself um, you're going to need to listen so hopefully you're in a quiet area because obviously you're not going to see the bottle from where you're at um, the way I did it is I'm using my GoPro camera and then I put my live mode on my camera and then as I'm pumping, I can actually see the bubbles come up through here, um, through the camera. But if you guys obviously don't have that center and you're doing this by yourself, you're going to have to go back and forth, back and forth to see, open the valve, close the valve, open the valve, close the valve until you have full pressure. Um, so what you're going to do is that you're going to pump the clutch for about like 15, 20 seconds. Okay, pumping it, pumping it, pumping it, and then this is gonna fill up. The bubbles um, should stop. Uh, once you start seeing no more bubbles, you're gonna go push down as slow as you can, and you're gonna pull the pedal all the way out, okay? Once that happens, okay guys, um, you're gonna close the valve, go into the inside the cabin, and you're gonna push on the clutch with your foot. And while that happens, feel the see feel if the clutch is going to return on you. If the clutch does not return when you push it down, you come back into here, open the valve back up. So we're going to open this up. All right, I'm going to go back into the cabin. Pump it three or four times. You're going to pump it three or four times. Close the valve. And then you're going to go back into the cabin and use your foot and see if you made any pressure. Right 
right now, I have full clutch pressure now. I'm pressing on it right now as we speak, and it's it's got pressure. So it's pretty stiff because again, this is a uh, we got a performance uh, pressure plate, so it's going to be a little harder than normal. Um, currently, it feels right, so I'm not. Um, Pretty much disappointed in how much pressure there's clutch. My wife's going to probably even hate me. <laughs> um, if the clutch feels spongy or too soft and you're not used to it, repeat the process a couple times until you get the results you want. For any reason, um, how can I say, uh, for any reason, it will not generate pressure correctly. Um, I would probably suggest a brand new uh, slave cylinder. Hopefully you purchase a brand new um, throw out bearing for this um, or a brand new bleeder valve. This guy right here, ble bleeder block. Sometimes these like to fail and like to leak a little bit. And if they start to leak, you won't get the pressure you want. Same with the throw out bearing. If you get a cheap throw out bearing, Sometimes they'll just literally blow up inside the transmission and create a leak. So you're back to that, removing the transmission, doing all that. Um, again, this is kind of a process that you will be doing for a little while. This took me about 15, 20 minutes to do, and I got, an, I got a lot of pressure on the clutch. I'm pretty happy with the amount of pressure that's required to engage the clutch and disengage it. And the clutch pedal actually comes back, so we're good. Um, after that, just close the valve nice and snug. On here, it's by hand, so it clicks, and which means it tells you it's locked. On Mark IVs, um, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a it's a pretty much just a, a bleeder valve with a with a with a nut on it. So just tighten the nut, and you're done. On Mark V, I think it's the same, but Mark VI's and seven have these little twisty locks, which is super convenient, by the way, guys. Thank you guys at Volkswagen for engineering this because this is amazing. No tools required, all done by hand. Um, that's it. Uh, make double check. You got no more bubbles coming out of here. If not, you're golden. And then, you know, go take your car for a drive. Thank you guys for watching this quick episode on how to bleed your slave cylinder or AKA throw out bearing on this car um, using the bleeder block on your Mark 7 Golf or Jetta. Peace out, everybody, and have a wonderful day.